Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to show you this uh, nice small box dice game, Warful Bonanza. It's designed by designer Uwe Rosenberg, who also designed Bonanza, which is a classic card trading negotiation game. This game is slightly different than that game, uh, but it has similar artwork, um, so it's in the same series. It plays from two to five players, ages 10 and up, and the box says about 45 minutes. Maybe that's about on the that's slightly on the long side it does depend on the number of players however so i would say 30 to 45 minutes um i'm going to take you take a moment to show you the rules for the game and then i'll come back and give you my thoughts on it okay so this is uh what might be a two-player setup for werfel bonanza uh each player is going to get one of these uh cheat sheets that shows them the dice faces for the two types of dice in the game it just shows you what symbols appear on each dice which will be important when you're making your decisions and then each player will also start with two of these cards, one face up, one face down. Like in normal Bonanza, uh, each face down card will have a coin on it, which will be a victory point for you at the end of the game. And the uh, face up cards, which this is one, it shows you a number of bean orders that you're trying to complete. And the way the game works is that you always start try by trying to complete the bottom order. If you complete that, you'll slide your second card up to show that you're working on the next order and so on. Once you get to this third row, um, you could be, at any time choose to turn this card in for one coin. Here if I completed that order I could turn this card in for two coins or three coins if I was here and if I completed every order I would be able to turn in four coin, turn in the card for four coins. Then at this point this would become my active card. I would draw another card to use as a marker and then that would be able to tra I'd be able to track my progress with that. So the way that the game works is pretty simple. On each turn, let's say this is the active player, the active player will roll the dice, and then every inactive player will, will look to see if they could complete their current order using the dice that were just rolled. So for example, this player here, you can see on their cheat sheet, they need either two orange or two green. This player's rolled two orange. They could complete that order immediately because they've... Uh, have the uh, two orange. Now the inactive player, what they have to do is they have to choose dice to set aside. There, or the, ac the active player has to choose dice to set aside. Those dice that the other player used do not get set aside or anything, they just get used and that player could take advantage of it. This player here, they need two blue and one yellow. They've rolled a blue and a yellow so maybe they'll choose to set those aside. Then they would roll again. They would not be able to roll any dice that they've laid onto this bean field. Um, but this player here would not also would also not be able to use the dice that are on the beam field to complete their orders. They could only use the dice that were just rolled. Whereas this player here could set sight dice onto the beam field and use those to complete their order. So this player needed um, two blue and a yellow. They still didn't get that. They do need a purple for their next for their next recipe. So they might set aside that purple. Still nothing, so they might set aside a brown, which they'll need on the uh, next roll. Um, perhaps they'll set aside another brown. And now they've finally gotten their blue, so they set that aside. You see they have blue, blue, yellow. They're able to complete this uh, first step. Now for the second step, they need brown, brown, blue, purple. They've already gotten that. And then for the third step, they need blue, blue, brown, orange. So they already have that. So they're already at the point where now they could turn in their dice. And then they would need two purple, blue, and brown. They don't have that. Their turn would end. And then it would just go to the next player who would become the active player. And the this player here would be able to use the dice from the active player that were just rolled to continue to complete orders. This goes back and forth with players completing orders at whenever they see fit. So for example, this player here could immediately choose to turn this in for a coin. This would flip over, become the order that they're working on. They would take another card to begin to mark their progress. This play continues back and forth until one player hits 13 uh, coins in their pile. If that happens, um, on their turn, they're able to uh, finish out their roll. If it happens on another player's turn, that, uh, that player is no longer able to roll. unless uh, And then whoever has hit that 13 mark wins, unless multiple people have done it at the same time. And then in that case, whoever has more coins will win. And that is how you play Warful Bonanza. Alright, so that is Warful Bonanza. Uh, the game is published by Amigo. It's 
I believe only published in German, but you could print uh, English rules off of Board Game Geek. There's a nice rules translation on the site there, so you would have no problems playing the game if you imported it. Um, Bonanza is a completely classic game. It's one of the best uh, you know card games to play with you know, a group of five or six players, I find. Um, and it involves a lot of trading and negotiating of, of your cards to try and complete your sets. Um, and has really interesting hand management. This game doesn't really have that. Um, it's an entirely different game. Um, you are just going to be rolling dice and, you know, instead of negotiating about taking dice from each other, each player is just free to take the dice that were just rolled from the main player. Um, this is uh, both less interactive than uh, Bonanza, which is a hugely interactive game where you're always going to be in the mix, even when it's not your turn. Here you'll be in your turn, which is... You know, so it's it's definitely somewhat interactive, definitely more interactive than most dice games, where often in a dice game you're just waiting for a player to take their entire turn because there's nothing that you could do until it's your turn to roll the dice. Um, but it is less interactive than normal Bonanza. At the same time, I think it's a unique game that, um, you know, it there is um, some press-your-luck element, not only in rolling the dice and setting aside dice, um, especially because some of the... Uh, faces of the dice are only present on one of the two types of dice, so you're always going to be considering that when you're setting aside dice. Um, but also in choosing on when to you know, cut your losses and go on to a new order card. Um, it's usually easy to slide up to the point where you get paid out on a card, but then once you get to that point it becomes progressively harder to get to, to the point where you could get four coins for a single card. And in a game where 13 points is the end of the game, four coins is quite a lot. So you really want to want to do that as much as possible. Um, the game, you know, it plays pretty smoothly. The only, I guess, quirk is that you always have to look at what the player just rolled. You know, there's some tendency in dice games to just go quickly and start setting aside your dice. But here, you really have to give other players a chance before you you'll begin that process, which does slow the game down a little bit. That's why it's more of a 30 to 45 minute game as opposed to maybe a 15 to 30 minute game. Um, but I would say that the game's fine for, you know, that length. Um, it doesn't really wear out its welcome. But, um, I would, in generally, I, I would say that I would prefer to play, uh, normal Bonanza to this, but this, this definitely hits a different mark entirely. It's not entirely fair to compare the two games to one another. This is a well-designed game, not surprising since it's designed by Ray Rosenberg, who's made a ton of terrific smaller, uh, filler games, as they're called. Um... And, you know, I would recommend seeking out a copy if you, especially if you've played a lot of Bonanza and you'd like to see, you know, what else that could be done with that theme. So that is my take on Warful Bonanza, and thank you for watching.